Good morning. And welcome to worship. Those of you who are worshiping virtually and those of you who are here in person, welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ. A couple announcements to draw your attention to. Um, one is that on April 6th, Maundy Thursday, uh, we will have a simple meal of soup and bread um, in the community room and then worship and communion there at the tables uh, that evening. And I just need you to um, email or call the office or sign up on the poster that's at the back of church this morning so we know about how much soup to prepare. And we are happy this morning to have a speaker from Camp Movell. Kevin Zimmer will speak to us a little bit later. Um, he is the site manager and responsible for the facility's safety and upkeep, for recruiting volunteers, for caring for livestock, and maintaining food service. Um, so we're privileged that he can take the time uh, to be here this morning. This is a time of worship, an oasis in the wilderness, an oasis in our busy week. Let us prepare to worship God together. Thank you, that was very soothing. Please stand so we can join together in our call to worship. Breath of life, you animate us. Holy One, when you speak, great things happen. Matchless One, you bring good things to life. 
Let's join together in the opening prayer. Life giver, come and revive us again. Indwell us with your spirit and let our souls wake to joy. We come boldly that you might breathe on us. May what we experience with you today change us forever and for the better. Amen. be seated. Individually and together we often fall short of what God hopes for us. Let us admit our need for forgiveness and for healing by joining together in the prayer of confession. Mender of hearts, we confess that sometimes in our brokenness we cause brokenness in others. Sometimes in our woundedness, we wound others. In these despairing moments, we need healing and restoration. We give thanks that we are never beyond your reach or grace. Amen. God's mercy makes wholeness possible, and our wholeness is rooted in becoming who we are meant to be. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I invite any children, young people, young at heart, who would like to, to come on up. All right. Hi. look very happy today and you've got bunnies I like them are there times though when you're not happy do you ever cry sure do you ever cry yeah what makes you cry right yeah when, when I don't get what I want, yeah, that makes me want to cry too. How about you? When do you cry? Um, happy yeah, there are times, yeah. There's times when we're just so happy we don't know what to do, and we cry. Well, there was one time when I went to camp. I was a counselor, and it was a two- or three-day camp. It was especially for children who had never gone to camp before so that they got a taste of it that wasn't too long. And so many of these children had never been away from home before, had never spent the night away um, at a camp. And so it came bedtime and they were tired and they decided they were lonely and one girl started to cry so then pretty soon everybody was crying. <laughs> it was very sad. Now I'll jump to the end of the story so that you know that we got through that little time. They began to make friends and have so much fun. They loved camp. I am not putting that down, Kevin. It was, <laughs> they, even the littlest children really loved camp. It's a lot of fun. But I want to talk about that time when they were all crying and sad. Should I have scolded them? Should I have said, you stop that crying? Do you think I should? No, no, I don't either, and I didn't. We just talked about what we were missing and what we could do about it. But it's okay to cry when you're sad, isn't it? The scripture we're going to hear today is about a time when Jesus cried a friend of his had died and everybody was crying and Jesus cried too. And that was an okay thing. And we could jump to the end of that story and know that pretty soon everybody was filled with joy. But today I'm thinking about there's times when we cry and it's okay to cry. God gave us emotions, the big happy ones and the sad ones, we feel them all. Now, do you ever um, have to get a shot at the doctor's office? Does that make you cry? Well, my, uh, uh, my daughter's Wednesday, she, sometimes I try at her shot. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. That's right. And it's okay. You cry when things hurt or if you fall down and skin your knee or, or whatever, you cry when you're hurt and that's okay too. So at the doctor's office, they often give you a fancy Band-Aid to make you feel better and put that over where you got your shot. So this is a Band-Aid with owls on it that you can take with you. Would you like one, Kathy? Why not, right? And they, yeah, I don't want you to cry. I'm going to give you your candy. Um, and that is something else that the doctor sometimes does, huh? They say, you need a reward. Oh, yeah, stickers. That, those are good, too. I don't have any stickers for you today, just the Band-Aid and the Tootsie Roll Pops. But this is a reminder that it's okay to cry. You can when you need to. So you can pick your color. All right. Thank you. All right. I'll say a little prayer, and then you can go back to the adults that you came with. All right. God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for knowing what it feels like when we are hurt or lonely or sad. And thank you for accepting our tears. Amen. Do I get some candy? Sure. Well, you don't have to cry to get this candy. That's what it's about. <laughs> you want a band aid? <laughs> We're going to re responsive reading of Psalm 130. We're going to sing the response first. Yes, please play it for us, Evelyn. Yes. <laughs> Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in your word I hope. From the depths I cry to you, listen, listen to my voice. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with God is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all its inequities. From the depths I cry to you, God, listen to my voice. Our scripture reading is taken from John 11, voice, verse 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. Then the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, 
Are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the res resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called to her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep, so the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. These are the words of the Lord. Amen. There are times when I'm reading the Bible when I wish the writers had used those little emoticons to tell us just what was happening. Or when it's supposed to be funny, put in an LOL so we know this was a joke, right? It would be so handy if we knew what exactly was happening. For instance, there was a time when Peter protested the idea that Jesus would be rejected and suffer, would be put on trial. And when he spoke about that, Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. Now, was Jesus seriously likening his beloved Peter to Satan? Maybe. Or was it said with a smile and a reminder? You know, Peter, 
Now, if we had the little emoticons to tell us, we would know. Um, when Abraham bargained with God over the destruction of the city, he said to God, well, if there are 50 righteous people there, would you have mercy on that city and save the people? And God said, yes. And so Abraham said, um, well, how about if there's 40? Okay, yes. Well, how about if there's just 10 righteous people? And God said, yes. It has always seemed to me to be kind of a funny routine. And I think Abraham and God were enjoying it, and it needed a little LOL beside the story. When Peter cut off the ear of one of the guards in the garden, one of the Romans, uh, on that night that Jesus was arrested, I imagine that um, Jesus was pretty angry. But how angry was he? I'd like to see the angry emoticon to tell me just what Jesus was feeling at that point. Was it a little frown, or was it the really angry red one that you see sometimes? If you were going to have a gospel story that needed some emoticons to guide us about what was going on, this chapter 11 from John would be a good one to have it. It's filled with developments that raise emotional responses in the participants. And if we read it closely, it's likely to provoke some emotional responses in us as well. And none of those responses is wrong or silly or trivial. The death of Lazarus was a tragedy to all who knew and loved him. The resurrection of Lazarus is a miracle. So just imagine how this whole event affected all of the people. Lazarus' friends and family, any religious leaders who were there, the neighbors, the disciples, and Jesus himself had a wide range of emotions happening. And that's a natural part of human nature. It is how we are made. And likewise, Christians today experience many emotions. And these need to be accepted, expressed sometimes, because doing so is both honest and redemptive. Some Christians may believe that they're supposed to be above all of that and above the power of the emotions. Many of us were raised to believe that Jesus would never be so weak as to succumb to feelings of fear, distress, anger, grief, or irritation. But our emotions were given to us by God. So looking at this event, there were the disciples. We would need a confusion emoticon and a concern emoticon to begin with. Confusion, because they knew that Jesus was good friends with Lazarus and his sisters, and they would have wondered why Jesus delayed and didn't go right away to hear and take care of Lazarus. They were concerned because they knew it was dangerous to Jesus to go near Jerusalem. And there were the sisters, Martha and Mary. They could rightly feel very accusing, and very hurt. They felt grief, they felt anger, and finally hope. By the time Jesus arrived at Bethany, Lazarus had already been dead for four days. So I would put that confusing emoticon on there right away, and the anger ones, because I think the statement might have sounded not mild, but rougher when the sister said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I don't think they said it nicely. And there was a mixture of feelings going on with all of the people there. Hope, because maybe, maybe Jesus could still do something. Martha said to him, even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. In all of this, though, I think the hardest to fathom were Jesus' emotions. What was he feeling? We can guess and gather from the gospel agitation, indignation, sobbing, anger, grief, 
When Jesus sees Mary and Martha and the neighbors weeping, he was, in the words of our New Revised Standard Bible, greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. But biblical scholars tell us that the underlying Greek words communicate not compassion, but agitation and indignation. The Message Bible may get the closest to what was going on when it says, when Jesus saw her sobbing and the people with her sobbing, a deep anger welled up within him, and then he too started sobbing. To say that Jesus wept, that famous shortest verse in the Bible, gives me the picture of Jesus standing rather stoically, but just a couple of tears escaping from his eyes and running down his cheek. To say that Jesus was sobbing with the friends and neighbors gives me a different picture. Now, I was taught that Jesus couldn't have been mourning because he knew Lazarus was coming back. So some have said that Jesus didn't experience any grief. He might have been angry at the lack of faith shown by the people around him. He might have been angry because death is just a gross injustice. Death feels like a low down enemy. Jesus might have been so filled with compassion that Lazarus' family and friends had to go through that hurt and grief and that they would eventually go through it again because even though Jesus brought him back from death this time, Lazarus would eventually die. Maybe Jesus felt frustration that poor Lazarus would have to go through this experience again. What did Jesus feel and why did he cry? We can't tie it up in neat explanations. Emotions aren't tidy and they don't always correspond point for point with what's going on inside us. At times we are wrenched with deep emotion and can't say exactly why. So here in this story of Jesus, while we can post the emoticon for compassion and anger and others, it isn't enough to cover everything Jesus may have been feeling. We've just reached a point where these emoticons are not sufficient. There appears to be something more Going on, going on inside Jesus at that time. And we just can't easily illustrate it or even comprehend it. Here's Jesus who knows that he himself is going to suffer and die. Here's Jesus who has just learned that his friend Lazarus has been dead now for four days. Here's Jesus accused by the two sisters whom he loved of not caring enough to hurry to Lazarus when he got the news. Here's Jesus seeing his good friend Mary crumbling in front of him with her tears of grief. Here's Jesus surrounded by people who are sobbing. Of course, we know the rest of the story. It says Jesus, again greatly disturbed, goes to Lazarus' tomb and calls him forth from death. And Lazarus comes forth alive again. For the disciples and neighbors, for Mary and Martha, the emoticons at the end of the story would all show amazement and joy. It seems a little odd, but nobody seems to ask Lazarus what he was feeling at the time. And the scripture doesn't tell us much about what Jesus felt towards the end of the story. When it comes to a conclusion, we don't get a gospel with emoticons. And so sometimes we can only guess at what Jesus was feeling and why. So maybe this whole story just leaves us with more questions and few answers. But maybe what we learn from it is that Jesus understood all of those emotions. He knew what it was like to feel the grief, the anger, the hurt, all of those strong emotions that were going on. And so if we stick with Jesus, trusting God that we are not alone, 
maybe the final emoticon to our stories is the one for joy. Amen. Will you stand if you are able as we sing what wondrous love is this? You may be seated. We come now to a time of prayer and we're reminded to prepare not only our hearts and minds, but our bodies. Relax them, get comfortable, and be in an attitude of prayer. Mighty and loving God, you give us many gifts and we are grateful. In happy times, we're thankful you rejoice with us. In sad times, we're grateful that you stand beside us and cry with us. God, we also bring before you our concerns. Those we mentioned this morning aloud and those we are worrying about without mentioning. God, we remember the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia, the people of Syria and Turkey. We pray with the people of Angola and Cuba. We pray for those in the far reaches of the world and we pray for those we know and love. We pray for Shirley, Betty, AJ, Paul, Terry, Zona, Haley, and Milo. Holy God, we ask you to send us companions and send us the compassion and the strength to be companions to those who are hurting. Companions who can look in a pained face and not turn away. Who can look at bruises and scars and not pull back. Who can hear anger and rage and not run away. Who can touch a fragile body with tenderness who can stay through the dark nights and the shadowed days, who can celebrate with us and cry with us. 
Holy God, touch us and use us to be neighbor and friend to those in need and to accept our neighbors and friends as they turn to us in our hard times. We pray all in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Kevin, I invite you to come up to either microphone that you like, and uh, we're ready to hear what you say. Hello. Greetings from Camp Moval. Um, as Lisa pointed out, I am the site manager at Camp Moval. The responsibilities are quite exhaustive, um, as you can imagine, taking care of a few hundred acres. Um, a lot's going on out at camp. A lot hasn't been going on out at camp for the last two years um, due to shutdowns of COVID and whatnot. Um, but we're back. Last year, I was hired in May to um, take on the position of site manager. And last summer, we saw about 92 campers. That's how many we have currently signed up for this coming summer. Now, campers, we take from ages newborn to 110. If you're over that age, I'm sorry, but we'll, we might have to make some special accommodations. Um, we have eight weeks of camp going on this summer. We've got our music, art, and drama camp. We have our all ages camps. We have our mini camps for ages seven to uh, nine. And those are just a short little taste. We also have family camp, which is July 5th through 7th. Um, that is family, however your family is. Um, grandparents, grandkids, um, aunts, uncles, find a kid, come out to camp, have that experience. Um, one of the new things we've got going on out at camp is livestock. We currently have a herd of chickens and, uh, and we will be getting some uh, goats that uh, campers will be hiking around camp helping us take care of some of the overgrowth um, in an environmentally friendly way. So, kind of cool, kind of fun. Um, we also have 100,000 different volunteer opportunities. Whether you like working with kids or you like working with goats. Um, some of you might like doing both, that's great. But we have opportunities galore out there. We have not seen a whole lot of uh, improvements over the last 60 years, 61 years this year that Camp Movell's been around. Um, I kind of owe a former pastor here at St. John's uh, a debt of gratitude for my career path in uh, outdoor education and outdoor ministries. Uh, Reverend Norton was the first camp director I ever had. Um, when I was about this tall, I was age three, and that was our family vacation that summer, and it just set me on a path to do what I do today and provide an excellent opportunity for folks to get outdoors and enjoy nature and appreciate God's creation. So, if you ever want to get a hold of us, please give us a call at the office. Um, if you're handy, skilled, labor, anything like that, greatly appreciated. Also, financial help is, is also encouraged. So, thank you for letting me come and talk to you guys today.
all good gifts around us come from God. As God has given us gifts, so we offer gifts that we might be gifts to one another, even as Jesus taught and lived. Celebrating our gifts, I invite you to stand and sing, Accept, O God, the Gifts We Bring. Join with me in the prayer of dedication. O oh God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, grant that our gifts may be symbols of our love and of ourselves offered more fully to you. Use our gifts and us, we pray, to the end that your realm may come and your will be done on earth, even as it is done in heaven. Amen. seated. We have been together in a time of worship. And now as we go out, go separate ways, continuing in all things to worship God and also to serve, may you know that God goes with you, walks beside you always. In God's name we have gathered. Amen.
Thank you.